Shabbat Shalom family. Welcome to another week of the Torah portion. This Torah portion is Torah portion number 27, Tazria, or leprosy. The reading can be found in Le Leviticus 12 and 1 through chapters 13 through 59. The writings can be found in 2 Kings 4 and 42 through chapter 5 and 19. The Psalms reading is 79 through 80. And the New Testament reading, the New Co Covenant reading, Matthew 8, 1 through 4, Matthew 11, 2 through 6, and Mark 1, 40 to 45. Let's begin, shall we? So starting with the New Testament portion found in Leviticus, it starts off not with the leprosy that we speak of today, but it starts with a woman in childbirth and what she must do after she has given birth and how she has to separate herself, present after several days, present the sin offering, present the child to be circumcised. There is an entire process that the mother has to go through, which I find very fascinating in, in some speaks because this is a this is one thing that as men Yeshua never had to go through. He didn't have to do this because he was a man. He never gave birth. So he didn't necessarily have to keep this particular commandment. But what is God really talking about? What is he really saying here? Does he want to just hinder women? after being after going through childbirth no medically when a woman gives birth she has to rest and heal after giving birth to a child because it is a traumatic experience in many ways this is him keeping his promise to Eve when he said after the fall he said your pain will be greatly multiplied she was going to experience pain in birth, but it wasn't supposed to be as bad as it was. And here God is making provision for women to heal and rest and be able to nurture after giving birth. Why? Because they're unclean. So you have time to be able to sit back, lay back, and relax. And just heal, meditate, nurture the child. I've heard many people <clears throat> speak on this and speak on it as a time of great suffering. That, oh, you're just hold God is, see, God is holding, he was holding people back in the Old Testament, but that's simply just not true. It actually somewhat reminds me of when Yeshua was driven into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit for 40 days. Why in the world would the Holy Spirit drive Yeshua, the King of Kings, into the wilderness? Well, the Bible says it's to be tempted of, it was to be tempted of the devil. And he was tempted 40 days and 40 nights. And he prevailed and came out. So when the woman gives childbirth at that time, as a matter of fact, in verse 2, it says, Speak to the people of Israel, saying, If a woman conceives and bears a male child, then she shall be unclean seven days. As at the time of her menstruation, she shall be unclean. The word menstruation is actually meaning infirmity or to be ill or unwell. So during that time, again, this is God showing mercy, saying you're ill, you're unwell right now. I need you to lay back, rest. Let his healing presence come over. And then, 
like in verse 6, and when the days of her purifying are complete, whether for a son or for a daughter, she shall bring to the priest at the, at the entrance of the tent of meeting a lamb, a year old for a burnt offering, a pigeon or a turtle dove for a sin offering, and he shall offer it before the Lord and make atonement for her. Then she, she shall be clean from the flow of her blood. This is the law for her who bears a child, either male or female. And then, of course, if she could not afford that, he gave the, the offering for the person who was unable to afford a lamb. God is awesome. He makes sure that he makes it able for us to do what he desires us to do. So then we go into 13 about leprosy, which is what the Torah portion is called. I just could not skip over the first part of it. It would do an injustice. Why? Because as we go on and read about what the priest has to look for in leprosy, not only was the priest acting in accordance to the priest in the office of the priesthood, he was acting as a doctor, a healer, an advocate. All those things are the things that we describe Yeshua as to us. He's our doctor. He's our advocate. He's our healer. All those things are found in chapter 13. We tend to take a look at the infirmity of leprosy itself. And it's, con it's the condition that we see. But the fact is, everything that we look at should be about Yeshua and what he sees in us. We are sick. We are in need of healing. We are in need of advocacy. And he's the one that is the healer. He is the one who has been our advocate since the foundation, before the foundation of the world. He's been all those things and continues to do so. Even when we don't even know better. We don't even know how infirmed we are, how leprous we are, and how our leprous or our, our sin breaks out and covers the body. Because in, chap in chapter 13 and verse 13, it says, Then the priest shall look, and if the leprous disease has covered all his body, he shall pronounce him clean of the disease it has turned white and he is clean but when the raw flesh verse 14 appears on him he shall be unclean and the priest shall examine the raw flesh and pronounce him unclean because raw flesh is unclean for it is a leprous disease just take a look at the state of the body of Christ he's talking about the body and how the priest has to declare Again, be the advocate, the doctor, and the royal priest, the high priest, over the body and declare if one is clean and unclean. I find that to be amazing. And it doesn't matter if a part of the disease is just on one part of the body or another part of the body. If it's on part or all, it is unclean. The whole body is. And it takes the doctor, the healer, the advocate, to give the instruction on what to do to be cleansed. Man, if that doesn't sound like Messiah, then I don't know what is. When we go to 2 Kings, it's a very popular story that we are aware of. In 2 Kings uh, chapter 4, starting at verse 42. Again, it's not something that I want to uh, bypass as well. It starts off by saying, in verse 42, a man came from Baal 
Shalisha, bringing the man of God bread and the, of the first fruits, 20 loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. And Elisha said, Give to the men that they may eat. But his servant said, How can I set this before a hundred men? So he repeated, Give them to the men so they may eat. For thus said the Lord, They shall eat and have some left. So he set it before them, and they ate and had some left, according to the word of the Lord. Does this not sound familiar? If you're not uh, sure of what I'm speaking of, this is talking, based, just base scripture. This is talking about Elijah telling his servant to go feed the men, the believers, those who came to hear Elisha speak and prophesy. Well, this is a shadow of things to come <laughs> but the body is still messiah's because did he not do the same thing you know when yeshua entered the scene he fed the men on well, this time he fed thousands in this instance in second kings he had to feed a hundred in the scriptures he even repeats the scripture that said that they shall eat and have some left. And they did it. They ate and had some left according to the word of the Lord. Cannot skip over that because, again, it shows, again, Yeshua, our advocate, who stands for us. You cannot... Uh, you cannot bypass that. And then in chapter 5, it goes into the commander of the king of Syria, Naaman, who was struck with leprosy and had to go to Elisha. Elisha didn't even want to see him. He just sent word back to his servant what to do. And how Naaman had to swallow his pride and do what thus said the Lord. How many of us are willing, are truly willing to do something like that? You feel like you know better, but when the word comes, you have to, you have to do it. Just do it. There's no harm in it. It's God looking out for his people. Again, being an advocate for his people. I just cannot ignore him being our advocate, him being our doctor, our physician, and high priest, all in one, and all encompassing, all caring, all loving, who wants us to heal when we are sick. Who wants to feed us when we are hungry. Who wants to care for us in our time of need. No matter what we are going through. God is with us. Our Father who art in heaven. Holy is his name. Let's always remember. that God never puts things in Torah for no reason. If it's there, there is a reason for it. There is a lesson to be learned from it. It's our job to seek after the hidden treasure of his holy word. That's what I got out of this week's Torah portion. I pray that you receive something out of it too. May this be a blessing to your ears, be a blessing to your heart. And again, Shabbat Shalom. We love you.